run through the steps and considerations for Open ID Connect. So Open ID Connect is based on um, based on the standard OAuth 2.0 protocol. So um, it's really just a, a small extension or, or customization to um, to the, the the standard standard mechanisms that are part of OAuth. Um, uh, which which allow it um, to, to to use our auth essentially to to confirm identity. Um, so prerequisites for implementing OpenID Connect. So um, of course, being based on OAuth and the systems involved uh, do need to be uh, compatible and, and enabled uh, for OAuth, um, and also able to communicate over over secure channels. Um, there's uh, the, the, the system that the user wants access to. So this is in OpenID world. This is known as the relying party. And in that system, we need to configure the authorization endpoints, the client ID and secret from the OpenID Connect provider. And these can either be configured upfront uh, or there's also mechanisms within OpenID Connect to enable dynamic registration as well. On the OpenID Connect provider, there needs to be a, an authorization endpoint, um, certainly, and generally uh, with, with most versions of this flow, there's a token endpoint and also a user info endpoint. So when we run through the flow, we'll show how, how both of those are used. It is possible to support OpenID Connect with even just an authorization endpoint to use the, the user agent implicit grant version of OAuth for OpenID Connect. But in most implementations, the, the authorization code or, um, or web server version is, is preferable and the user info endpoint um, can, can be useful as well for reasons we'll see in a moment. The OpenID Connect provide uh, also needs to be configured with the, the redirect URIs, which is the acceptable callback URLs from the relying parties. Again, that can be either configured up front or, or dynamically. So running through the flow for OpenID Connect. So there's three, three system actors involved. The user's browser, this could also be a mobile app, but for the purposes of this diagram, I've shown this as a browser. The relying party, as I mentioned, this is a system that the user wants to access a resource from. And if we're setting up Salesforce as a relying party, um, this, this, would, uh, this would represent the, um, the, the uh, Salesforce in, the, in a social sign-on implementation. Then finally, the OpenID Connect provider. So this would be the, the system which is um, assessing and confirming the identity of the user. So, um, so in, in, in a social sign-on situation, this could be something like Microsoft or, or Google. It's worth mentioning as this is so closely linked to OAuth, we can also think of these as uh, the standard um, authorization server and the client application in, in both world. So the first step of this flow, so the, uh, the user via their browser or their app is requesting a resource that's a protected resource of the relying party. The relying party will check, is this person already logged in? Um, and if they're not, then it'll, it'll kick off this flow. So that's, that's what we'll see here. So the first step of this for the relying party is to redirect to the OpenID Connect provider to their authorization endpoint to request a, an authorization code. So, so this flow assumes that we don't already have an access token configured in the, in the relying party. So the first thing they'll do is request an authorization code. As I mentioned, this is the web server flavor of OAuth. So you'll see a lot of similarities with, with that flow. Um, so, so yeah, it's worth, worth taking a look at, at the summary for, for the web server flow as well. The response type attribute is set to code as it would be for, for any, any other web server flow. The redirect URI if, we're, if Salesforce is acting as the relying party would be the uh, auth global callback URL. And the scope, there is an open ID scope, which is generally required 
to buy, buy an OpenID Connect provider. Some OpenID Connect providers also require other scopes as well. So, so this can, can be down to specific implementation details. The OpenID Connect provider checks, is this person, is this user logged in um, initially and within the OpenID Connect provider? So do they already have a session? And let's assume that they don't. So uh, the next thing, so the OpenID Connect provider then needs to authenticate the user within the uh, within, within that, that system. So this would be done in, in whatever mechanism the OpenID uh, Connect provider um, requires. So single multi-factor authentication and so on. Um, and once that's all complete, the session cookie is established for the OpenID Connect provider. At this point, the uh, OpenID Connect provider will then prompt the user, as, as with any other OAuth flow, do, are, they, are, they, are they comfortable to share the, uh, the consent details that have been requested from the relying parties, so the, the OpenID scope or, the, or any other scopes that might have been requested. Once the user confirms that, the OpenID Connect provider would generate the auth code and then send that back to the relying party through a browser redirect. Uh, so that would go, go back to the, to the redirect URI that's been supplied in the authorization code request. That redirect URI would be checked against all of the acceptable callback URLs or redirect URIs that have been configured in the OpenID Connect provider. Next step is then for the relying party to request an access token from the OpenID Connect provider. So again, very similar to standard OAuth web server flow. There's a call to the token endpoint, an out-of-band HTTP post request. Uh, with the web server, standard web server flow here, we're assuming that the relying party is also uh, configured with the client ID and client secrets for the OpenID Connect provider, so it provides them uh, that, that, that allows this, this authorised call to be accepted. Uh, the OpenID Connect provider then validates the client ID and secrets um, and the authorization code checks that they're all valid. Assuming they are, responds with the access token response and also the ID token, presuming the ID token scope has been, um, has been requested. And the relying party can then, then verify that ID token. So that ID token already includes a lot that's quite useful for sign-on. So, um, so sort of standard attributes around email address, username, that kind of thing, all, all included there. Um, some implementations, this will, uh, this will kind of be considered the end of the flow. So the attributes from the ID token used to authenticate the user in the relying party. The recommended mechanism is actually to implement a separate endpoint, which is the user user info endpoint at the at the OpenID Connect provider. So with this endpoint, there's then a subsequent call from the relying party to the user info endpoint, um, including the the access token, uh, and this is an, essentially a, um, a a request for all of the claims that are configured within the OpenID Connect provider as being OpenID Connect uh, information that, um, that, 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 that the relying party might, might want to consume. So uh, there will typically be quite a lot of overlap with the ID token, but this is a, a helpful way for the OpenID Connect provider to include other information that it might not generally include in all ID tokens. Um, particularly for kind of rich, um, rich information like pictures and, and large files potentially could even be, be included in the response here. The relying party will then um, check that that user info um, claims object that it's, it's retrieved from the user information endpoint, check that the subject of that token matches the subject of the ID token. Um, and at this point, the, um, the relying party then has, um, has all the information to authenticate the user. If this is Salesforce acting as the relying party, this is the point where the registration handler will be, will be invoked to, uh, to create or update the user. 
And finally, after the relying party has checked from its perspective that, that it's comfortable that the user should be logged in and is authorized to access this, this resource. So checking things like the account isn't disabled, for, for example, um, then the resource would be then served back, back to the browser for the user to access. Uh, this, this is also the point that the, the session within the relying party is established. And there's a nuance of the OpenID Connect spec that the, uh, that the relying party session should be checked on a regular basis. So, um, so typically every 15 minutes, something like that, the relying party should be uh, reconfirming the session at the OpenID Connect provider. So the OpenID Connect provider will typically have set a, uh, a cookie to establish the session for the user in the uh, OpenID Connect provider. So that will be um, that that session will be checked on a regular basis. OK, so a few extra bits and pieces just to be aware of around this. So the um, this is um, uh, the, as, as a protocol, it's, it's quite a bit more modern than, than SAML. So SAML's been around since about 2003. OpenID Connect since around 2014, the spec was, was introduced. So it makes, makes the most of more, more modern web technologies. So it's REST-based. It uses JWT tokens to pass, pass um, as, as both the ID token and the, um, uh, the user info claims. Um, so much more lightweight, um, lightweight mechanism for sharing information. So a bit, bit more suitable for, for mobile use cases. Um, as I mentioned, there's no um, restrictions around which OAuth flow are used. So this could be the authorization code. It could be the auth code with Pixie flow um, or, or a, an implicit grant flow. Uh, there's a um, looking at um, specific, specifically in, in Salesforce, if uh, Salesforce is set up with with an auth provider and access the relying party, uh, then there's the capability to offer an existing user linking URL. So this is quite a handy mechanism for uh, for embedding a, a a link that a user who is already authenticated can click, which will allow them to to link in. And their account with um, with a, with an, a, an Open ID Connect provider. Uh, so this is, this is this is quite useful if if you've got scenarios like in a in a community situation where you want a user to be able to to link in their social account. There's also the capability for single logout. So similar to SAML, this is in both directions. The um, uh, the relying party can um, can call a URL from the the Open ID Connect provider to log out. From there, um, and similarly, the OpenID Connect provider can initiate login logout from the relying party by by calling their single logout URL. So this means if if, if the implementation requires it, that logging out of a of a single system can log out of uh, of all systems that the that the user is authenticated to through that OpenID Connect provider. Um, it's also worth um, worth just mentioning around uh, this isn't sort of strictly um, strictly a, 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 a um, an open ID connect um, thing but the um, it's worth mentioning Salesforce does actually also support open ID connect like mechanisms for for a number of specific providers um, that, that are offered through the auth provider area of Salesforce so whilst whilst Google and Microsoft do offer open ID connect services which are presumably used for their standard configurations in, the, in as auth providers in Salesforce. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn actually uh, don't offer OpenID Connect services, but they do all offer their own bespoke uh, protocols, which are, which are also based around OAuth2 and work in a very similar way to OpenID Connect. Um, so uh, so these, these mechanisms um, have a lot of share a lot of the same, same um, features of OpenID Connect. Um, but there are some some subtle differences. Um, it's also possible. I just start, uh, speaking to that first bullet point that um, so it's uh, Salesforce offers offers the ability to set up custom OpenID Connect providers as well. So any any system that that offers OpenID Connect um, as a as a capability can use as, be used as an OpenID Connect provider for Salesforce. Um, so, what to think about um, if we're if we're considering 
introducing OpenID Connect as a, as a single sign-on mechanism. So, um, so with the, um, with, uh, with if, if we do go for the option of dynamic registration, um, this has a quite significant advantage over a um, over a typical enterprise SAML scenario in that we can um, we can configure relying parties without the um, without an open ID connect and provider necessarily having to be um, con configured directly to to support that relying party. So. Um, I haven't gone into detail on how dynamic client registration works, but essentially there's an endpoint at the OpenID Connect provider that the relying party can call, which then um, allows them to, to register the redirect URIs um, and retrieve the client ID and secret needed to, um, to, to perform OpenID Connect um, auth authentication calls. Um, so this makes, makes, as a protocol, this makes it very suitable for external use cases where, so if, if, for example, um, platforms like um, Office 365 and, and, and Google, where we, we, we won't necessarily be going to, to those platforms to, to configure the details of the, of the relying party. Um, it's also a nice, a nice feature that the user themselves um, uh, provides their own consent to sharing the information from the OpenID Connect provider with the relying party. So um, again, this is, works in a slightly different way to, to SAML, but the, uh, that information sharing is more explicit to, to the end user. Um, it's based on, as I mentioned, quite, quite lightweight modern web protocols, uh, which make it a, a much better choice than, than SAML for, for mobile applications. Um, and um, in a typical web server implementation with a, with a back channel in place um, where we have out of band um, requests being sent to the OpenID Connect provider, um, there's that extra level of security that we're not sending sensitive information across, across the browser. Um, and it also allows for a more, more rich information transfer and larger files without that contributing to browser traffic. It's also worth mentioning this is, of course, because it's built on top of OAuth, any systems which already support OAuth are kind of halfway there in terms of being able to support OpenID Connect. So it's often just a, a quite a straightforward extension to, to allow those systems to, um, to adapt to this protocol. Um, and finally, just, just to be aware, as this is a, a newer, newer um, protocol to SAML, it's, it's not nearly as prevalent, um, but it is, it is becoming a lot more common if, even in, um, um, in, in enterprise applications.